Let's Cover That podcast is brought to you by CMNF Group, professional liability services for over 200 healthcare professions. Visit our website at cmfgroup.com slash podcast for more info. Hey, everybody, Will Sullivan here with another episode of Let's Cover That with my co-host, Antonina Agruza. And today we have with us Dr. Annie DePasquale, a board-certified family medicine physician and the founder of Collaborating Docs. Dr. Annie, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks a lot for having me. I'm excited. So are we. So Dr. Annie, tell us a little bit about your background in healthcare and what led you to Collaborating Docs. Sure, sure. I'm a I'm a family medicine physician and my my whole career has pretty much been working at federally qualified health centers, mostly in the Washington DC area where I'm from and live. Um, and during my, you know, tenure working at federally qualified health centers, I was always interested in sort of side gigs and ways to make a little extra money on the side. So I um I also love teaching. I love mentoring. So I I really fell into serving as a collaborating physician for um, nurse practitioners local to my area um, who were starting their own practices. And legally in the state of Virginia, where I reside, they need a collaborating physician to help them if they're doing their own practice. So on the side of my um, own practice, I would help them sort of after hours um, and weekends, evenings when they had questions and would do chart reviews and meet with them. And I loved it. I just I always have loved teaching. And that was it, it was just a great fit for me. And then word sort of spread and lots of people were asking me to be their collaborating physician, just friends of the people I was helping and colleagues of those people. And it became sort of unbelievable how many people are asking me and there are caps on how many people you can help at a time. So I thought, my goodness, what is going on? Why is everyone asking me? And they said, it's really hard to find a doctor who likes to do this, you know, who's open to helping. So it planted the idea, maybe I can kind of play matchmaker and connect nurse practitioners with other physicians that I know and trust that are going to be good at helping them. And that's sort of how Collaborating Docs started um, we started in 2020, right around when COVID hit, and um, it's really taken off from there. And we're proud to say we've helped about 2,000 nurse practitioners to date get connected with physicians. So it's really, really exciting to be helping so many people. Yeah, so so kind of awesome storyline and how you progress to that, Dr. Annie. What, so give us a rundown about collaborating docs platform, the services you provide and, and all that good stuff and how you're helping NPs really drive into their new careers. Sure. Yeah. So we, we, when I set out to do this, I really wanted to elevate what collaboration was. It, it can get a little bit of a bad rap in the medical community um, that doctors sign up to help people and they do nothing for me or I can never get a hold of them. And that's something we I really wanted to combat. And I know that's, you know, why people are coming to me because I was really helping them and, you know, giving them time and um, uh, improving, you know, it, however I could, giving them advice to improve their practices. So I wanted that to continue on, obviously, as we expanded. So our service really involves a couple things. Um, one, our physician's Um, have to be available during normal business hours. So if there's a question, you know, an NP is with the patient, they have a question, they can actually get a hold of someone to get help. Um, Our doctors also have to meet over a video chat once a month with the NP um, at a time that works for both of them. But, you know, that face-to-face one-on-one time is so helpful to really flesh out questions, problems with patients, you know, whatever they may want to discuss And the third is that the doc has to review 10% of charts monthly, not to be punitive, it's to be helpful. Like, oh, I see you see a lot of people with diabetes, you know, have you thought about offering this service or that service? Um, So the doctor is more in tune with what's actually happening with the practice. So all those things are really above and beyond what most states require. Most state requirements are kind of vague and pretty minimal. Um, so we've sort of stepped it up. So any client of ours is getting like actual help that's meaningful to them, which I'm 
quite happy about. Um, and I know our clients like that as well. How, so how does, you know, just looking at the other side of the board with the collaborating doctor, how's their response been to those requirements? If they're, you know, Hey, this is, you know, a little bit lighter in the regulations in my state, but you're clearly like keeping a different standard. How's their response been to that? Um, that's a good question. You know, most are very happy about it because they also want to bring value to the client. Um, however, yes, there are physicians that complain and like, why would I do that? That's not required by the state. I've never done that before. I don't even know what you're talking about. You know, I don't think working for collaborating docs is a great fit for you. And that's okay. Like these are our standards. And if that's not, you know, the work you want to put into it, it's okay. So that, that comes up we do a very intense vetting process when we bring on new physicians. And if we get the sense this is not going to be, um, you know, something they want to help with, it's okay. We're just not a good match for them. Super interesting. So can you tell us a little bit about the evolution of the MP profession over the last few years and how that's kind of affecting the healthcare system and the need for the collaborating docs? Absolutely. I mean, I think we'd all agree we're in a healthcare crisis in America. Um, lack of access to care, especially in rural areas, um, low income areas. I mean, it's a big, I mean, we would all, I'm sure, agree it's a giant problem. So I, I see nurse practitioners as a huge solution to this problem. You know, the vast majority of nurse practitioners are family nurse practitioners. So they're trained in family medicine, primary care. And that's the biggest need of all. So I think it's nurse practitioners are the solution um, in many aspects of this crisis. Um, we love when we get nurse practitioners and we get a lot of them in tiny towns in the middle of nowhere. I want to serve my community, but I need your help to do it because legally I need this physician. I mean, that's our favorite client to get the call from and to help make this happen. So. Um, I think obviously nurse practitioner as a field is really growing very quickly. And I think it's perfect because there is such a need, um, so many gaps in care um, out there that I'm happy we're along for the ride and just sort of helping, you know, fill those holes how we can. Um, it's, it's, it's a great, it's, it's just like the perfect time, I think, for anyone interested in healthcare to become a nurse practitioner because there's just, you know, this wide open, um, need for them right now. Yeah. So it, yeah, that's amazing because there are certain states where, you know, New Mexico, for example, you're hearing a lot of trouble, you, you know, the FQHC, the federally qualified healthcare uh, clinics, like that's a good representation of a state that needs those type of ha uh, opportunities. And so when you're talking to nurse practitioners, what are, what are like the top three things that you're saying? Hey, this is what you need to get moving. And, and clearly your services kind of provide that, but you guys have like a really good list of these things are going to cost a lot of dough for you. We streamline it. We have expertise. So what are those services that you bring to them to kind of expedite the process for them? Yeah, it is interesting. A lot of people think, well, I just need a doctor, but there's a lot more to it. Um, I'd say the first thing is, the legality around it is very complicated and confusing to anyone, you know, reading the regulations and they're not in a standard location on the website or the board's website. It's you have to really go digging to find all the codes and um, just all the regulations surrounding collaborating are kind of hidden all over the place um, and they vary state by state. So. Um, our team, we have in-house legal, which um, it's a big expense for us, but it's it's 100% necessary to have very clear guidance on every state and what's required for collaborating in every state. So we give that to our clients so they don't have to go digging around for that. Um, and then our physicians are fully aware of what they need to do. The client is aware of what also needs to be happening. So it's it's good for everyone involved. Um, we also draft the collaborative agreements for our clients because going and finding a lawyer can be very pricey um, and, and complicated. A lot of lawyers have never even heard the word collaboration. 
So to develop a contract out of thin air for something they don't know anything about is not easy to do. So we give that, um, we do cover the malpractice for our physicians, which is nice because that usually falls, the, the cost of it usually falls on the nurse practitioner. Um, and I think the last third part would be the um, ongoing facilitation. Um, we stay involved the whole time that we've matched people. So if things happen, I mean, life happens, we've had physicians, we had a physician, for example, during COVID that um, was one of our favorites, but the clients couldn't get a hold of him. So they're calling us, you know, the support team, what's going on? And I, I, this is very unusual, but I can't get a hold of my doctor. Um, and then we tracked down, you know, through his wife, he was in the hospital, in the ICU, actually, with COVID himself, which is awful. He got better, thank God. But, you know, things happen to doctors just like anyone else. So um, it's nice to have a team that can kind of do that hunt and figure out what's going on. So you're not left, you know, just curious why no one will call you back. Um, so I think it, it, the survey, and then if there is a problem, we can rematch overnight, you know, if there is some catastrophic problem or, you know, the connection is not a good one, we can help facilitate a new match. So I'd say those are probably the things people don't think about, <laughs> the legality of it, the malpractice, and then just the facilitation when things maybe aren't going as expected. Someone is kind of a third party has your back for that, which is nice. Yeah, for sure. And I think, you know, like you said in the beginning of the show that so many of these MPs are starting their first practice. And that alone is so overwhelming. So it's nice to have someone to really handhold you and guide you through so much of these pieces. So really, really great work, Dr. Annie, and we appreciate what you're doing for the healthcare system. Can you tell us a little bit about any upcoming partnerships or milestones that you're particularly excited about? Yes, um, I'm excited because we just hired a nurse practitioner herself to sort of head up our partnership program. Um, so this is like a big step for us as a small company to have someone that that's like their uh, primary focus. And it's going to allow, we really want to give value and advice to our clients for the reasons we're just saying. I mean, in med school, nurse practice, nurse school, nobody is taught how to run a business or a medical practice, even though that's what most of us end up doing, sort of counterintuitive, but we don't have Pretty much most medical people don't have a background in business. So we are going to build out, we've already started building out sort of recommended service providers, recommended vendors for marketing, for business formation, for malpractice, for um, EMR, all the different things people need to think about and have to start a practice. Um, we, we sort of made a business decision. We will not be the ones, you know, giving all these things, but we can definitely point you in the right direction and have a great catalog of here are the best of the best in the industry out there that you could access, you know, and go to them for help. So it is on our website now. It's sort of like the early version. It's going to be, you know, improved upon and um, have more and more resources, but um, it is there now just as a starting point um, for people to get help with what specifically they're looking for help with. I think that's amazing, especially the, just the, you know, the societal issue that we have, I, I see in a lot of areas, not just in healthcare, it's just people wanting to pass along wisdom and guidance and how your, your business model is built on that with doctors who want to collaborate and nurse practitioners who are really have this big appetite to grow personally, but also bring access to care in these small towns, like you say, and there's tons of companies out there trying to do this in a large scale operation, but how you're doing it from this decentralized standpoint where you're just providing resources and, and getting them out there and the redundancy you're building into it too. Like you said, if there's a catastrophic event with a collaborating doctor too, it's just amazing work that you're doing. And, and thank you for doing it, Dr. Annie. I love it. I, I'll be honest. I mean, I was a burnt out family medicine physician, you know, the healthcare system is so flawed, you know, 15 minute visits back to back to back, no break, no time to eat lunch, no time to run to the bathroom. I mean, it's, it's just not sustainable what they have all of us doing, which I think <laughs> that's a whole other uh, podcast to talk about. But, um, you know, 
I'm so happy that, you know, we are empowering nurse practitioners to fill a void. And a lot of them are building their own practice to avoid their own burnout, which I think that gets me very excited. They're building in, I'm going to do 30 minute visits. I'm doing 40 minute visits. If you're in a traditional, I hate to say, FQHC, at Federally Qualified Health Center, where I used to work, you don't have that luxury. <laughs> you don't have a choice. It's, you know, kind of mandated by the head of the clinic or whatever. We are doing this, you know, 15 minute visit all day, every day. So I think it's exciting to see what new ideas nurse practitioners are coming up with so they themselves don't burn out. Um, and even just being the boss, being in charge of your own practice is going to combat that a lot just to begin with. You know, you set the policies, you set the schedule, you set the time off policy. Yeah, I mean, you're already building in a lot of things that make the burnout much less likely. However, even just innovative, a lot come up with the most creative business models. Like, um, I'm just going to very specifically help you know, teenagers with depression over telemed in my state. And, you know, I think it's just, it's so great that people can find what is their, you know, passion project and just run with it. I think that's going to also, you know, decrease this whole burnout that most healthcare professionals are facing. I think it's, it, yeah. I mean, one of the things I think about is just how you use business as a force for good and you go out and do something. And like you said, you have a passion project. You're able to focus like your genius on this item. And when everybody starts doing that, they start seeing just that now you're going to burnt out people as patients and you're not burnt out. And you're able to really like inject a lot of passion into it and help them further and faster. Yeah, I would imagine in most scenarios. So it's just, it's really cool what you're all doing. And, and yeah, again, th thank you for doing it. Yeah, no, it's 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 a win-win. Yeah, is we're just so happy to do it because you know the nurse practitioner can start the practice of their dreams. The doctor gets a little side job, side you know gig that they're excited about. It, you know, it's access to care improves every way you look at it. I think it's it's helping everyone involved. So yeah, love it, and um, I really appreciate you spreading the word about, you know, just that this is even an option for nurse practitioners who might feel stuck and trapped in a job at a hospital that they hate or at a clinic that they don't have any um, say in their schedule. I mean, we get that a lot. I, I've been working all nights, all weekends. Um, I miss my kid's birthday. I, you know, on and on and on. They don't know there there is a way out. You know, they, they really, there are enough resources out there, they can, even with no business experience, start their own practice and be very successful at it, which is awesome. Yeah, it's it's truly amazing and really empowering. And again, we really appreciate your work, Dr. Annie, and your time today. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it was fun. And um, yeah, I, I just say any NP out there, you can do it. And you know, we have your back, at least for the doctor part. Uh, the rest, it is a lot of work, but there are great resources out there. And yeah, we're excited to make it happen for NPs out there. Thank you. And that's another episode of Let's Cover That.